Welcome to another episode of 10K Hours. I'm Michael Peckia. I'm Justin Field. And today we have prolific 3D artist Meets Meyer. Hello. Hey, welcome. Thank you. You know, we got to dive in and we got to get the explanation of mm. your first name, <laughs> Meets. We, we got to dive into mm. how did you get the first name Meets? Well, and we're talking red meat. Oh, yeah. The, the <laughs> reddest in town. Yeah. So more or less, it's it's. I wish it was a excellent story. You know, something about a locker room, like <laughs> first time they saw me in the locker room or something like that. But actually, we had a cross from our high school. We had a, a restaurant called Myers Meats, and so my friends, being the creative types, hey, it's Myers Meats because my last name, of course, Meyer, and it was spelled the same. Everything, you know, that was my, that was my meat place, and so they started calling me that, and eventually I started signing my artwork that way. And, um, and then when I moved to LA, it became meets a hundred percent. So, and it's, it's even my bank, you know, it's a, I brought in a couple of magazines with my name on it and things like that. And they're like, okay, you, your meets. And so I, people, if, you know, they write meets on the check, they'll cash it for me. Oh, really? So really? It's, it's almost oh, as wow. good as having it changed, but without That's actually I was going to say, so you haven't had it legally changed. No, I almost did, but I was uh, talked out of it by somebody. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> unique. Yeah. But well, welcome, welcome to Tank. You got to keep, keep your secret identity secret. Yeah, man. exactly. You can I have to have a hidden, real hidden personality in there. Yeah. And jumping in, <laughs> we know your 3D work, mm -hmm. but we want to step back to, you know, say high school or mm -hmm. you know sooner. When did you know you had the art bug? Oh man, it's probably second grade. My teacher noticed that I did artwork and so they assigned me to create this there's like an art board and I had to take care of it myself and like do, do all the design of what went up there and my drawings and all that kind of stuff and so around my elementary school I started to be known as an artist and I went to a few friends house and they had my artwork hanging on their fridge you know when I went to their house so I was like <laughs> whoa this this is the shaboinks here you know I'm like <laughs> yeah. hey, anybody want to sign had an autograph signed mom no you know, and so it's like I did that. But. Nice. So, so you already had an art gallery. Yeah, in elementary I mean, school from second grade on the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. and I was getting chicks house. because of it and everything. You know, second grade, and hey, that's the artist guy. So that's it was my like from the very beginning. It felt like that's who I was. You stepped into that role at a very young yeah, age, and it, it was yeah. nice. I kind of you know felt some admiration from it. You know, I was a skinny, nerdy kid. You know, that kind of antisocial. And so people, you know, I found it was something that I could do that people like looked at me that thought it was cool. So I wanted to, you know, explore that and get as good as I could. And, and starting so young, which is a unique opportunity to really to really be able to refine your craft. Did you have a certain style back then or were you emulating other people to get, get to get yourself better? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Some of the stuff that I did, it's uh, I st still have a few of the things, um, but it's, I, I liked um, as I got a little bit older, I started drawing like comic book stuff. I had a character that I did for a long time called Blood Man, where he would run up and like split his wrists and like spray the blood on you. Like they, they would either get gross and run out or slip on it or like, they'd be blinded and they couldn't, you know, protect themselves. So, so a lot of stuff. I, like I mean, it. the things I look back on, it's like, wow, I had a either I'm surprised they didn't like send me send me off to you know to have some some evaluation on my brain you know a lot of the things that I draw so, <laughs> so I started out weird and so it never really stopped who was who your like if you like going back to those days what was your well, like what was your favorite comic and who's your like favorite artist hmm. like I mean at what I, point did you start noticing oh hey I need to know who the artist is that's drawing this you know what I mean yeah, you know, it's I've never really been like a, a fan of other artists. I never mm -hmm. collected art books or anything like that. I just kind of I saw their art and kind of emulated them later on. But it's like Giger, of course, was mm -hmm. like a huge one. Um, uh, Soriyama. Oh, Soriyama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does a lot of airbrushing, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah a lot of really exactly. cool robot stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that that's the guy that made me kind of want to start becoming doing airbrush. And that's kind of where my career started taking off. So <clears throat> that was going to be my next question, knowing that you did get into airbrushing. Mm -hmm. um, when when did you actually start airbrushing? It was I was still in school and my dad bought me uh, airbrush, like the whole system, and, you know, things like that. Not incidentally, around the same time, he bought me like a Vic 20 computer as well with the graphic stuff on there. So oh, wow. basically right as I was starting airbrush, I was really starting digital back then, too. And, um, so that's, I, I was kind of into both, but it's like, as far as the airbrush went, it just, it was so like 
fun and liberating to put all that stuff on. I was doing walls of friends' houses. Um, and I really started doing a lot of artwork for bands. Oh. And um, so I'd go to places. I, would, I did this cover of this um, artwork for a band called One Eye. And it was this guy with this big eyeball, like looking into it like that. And it turned out really cool. And it kind of, I was seeing it places. And I actually went to a bar one time and I saw it hang, somebody drew a picture of my picture and hang it at the bar. Oh, that's you know, cool. So that was kind of like the second level of like, whoa, yeah, you know, yeah. so now I'm, now I'm. Now people good. are emulating I'm, you. I'm 100% good now. Yeah. yeah. And so um, that, the airbrushing actually led to my first job as a video game artist because the, uh, at a bar, a guy who owned a bar had a bunch of my artwork hanging as he was looking to start up a video game company. And he, that's more or less like he, he saw that artwork and then said, hey, do you want to come and design video games? What the, year? What year was that? That was like 1993. Oh, my so God. So that, that was when like Virtua Fighter was starting to come out. Yeah, that was like Sega. right as we had the very first polygons in a arcade machine. I used to and, love. I put so many quarters in Virtua Fighter. Yeah, it was pretty rad. It was the it was the sure. coolest thing. It just it was so Street interesting Fighter. to see like the camera yeah. moving around. You know, we had never seen anything like that before. But yeah, yeah, it's insane. So, so now you had the computer. You've got mm. your airbrush. Were you able to cross them over? That mm. <clears throat> you know, maybe you were going to do some airbrushing. You know, did you could you figure it out in the computer or vice versa that you. Hey, I'm doing airbrushing. I want to emulate it in the computer. And then you tried to figure out how to emulate in the computer. Oh, I most definitely tried, but using deluxe paint, which was the, the, the early on, you know, the, the Amiga stuff, you had like eight colors, you know, there wasn't yeah. a lot of like airbrush style mixing, things like that. I could tell that it was a completely different ball game, but yeah. I think kind of like my interest in art, like helped me, you know, get past a lot of the hurdles in those early digital stuff. And they had some really rudimentary like animation capabilities within that as, as well. So like you make people jump on trampolines. And so I started thinking about like overlapping motion and all that kind of stuff early on. And it's just kind of like a part of me without even really learning about it ever. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just kind of, I, I assume that's what you should do. And I just went for it. And you kind of want to say naivety mm -hmm. helps because mm -hmm. you were so excited and you were learning, <clears throat> you were still doing your art mm -hmm. with your airbrushing but you had something to cross over to, as you mentioned, those hurdles to try to figure something out. Because if you just probably try to figure that computer out on mm -hmm. your own without having the art to push right. you, you yeah. would have tossed it aside. Yeah. And I might not even have been interested in it in the first place, you know, because it just it was so technical, you know, and, but it's the technical to me is almost like an art in its own right in a lot of ways. And so it's the, the technical and figuring out stuff. It's with 3D and graphics, it's almost all like you have to figure it out. And there's a lot of technical stuff in order for you to be able to do your art. And so it takes a lot of studying to get these special superpowers in order to do these things like in a timely manner. It, it's it's a balance. Yeah. In, in realizing you got to put the time in, sometimes you got to push the art aside. Yeah. And, and sit down and get technical. Exactly. And, and really figure it out. Especially and early I, on. Especially especially early on where yeah. everything was pure technical and everything took forever. You know, yeah. it's not like today. It wasn't like today. You didn't have a tablet. And no, you just there turn was around nothing. And start no, it was, it was <laughs> a lot was, of waiting what was involved. What the first 3D software that you were using? Um, the, the first 3D software? Yeah. I used uh, Strata Studio Pro. St on the, Stratus Studio Pro. Yeah, yeah. and that was on an Apple, like an early, early Apple. You know, so even like today, Apple a lot of times, Apple's aren't what? good for 3D, but this was like one of the, the first like Apples out oh, there. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's more or less like if you turned a model, you would see the, the download of that, you know, kind of like the early days of like looking at pornography where it would just kind of fill, <laughs> fill in. I have thing. no clue what you're talking I, I about. Me neither. I don't know anything and, like that. So it's like you turn your model and you'd come back in five minutes to see the other side. You right, know? right. So I had that very early of like, you know, you're going to appreciate the rest of your life. Your life is going to get easier and easier as time goes on because right now it's extremely hard. But even though it was so hard, it was like, but it was like instantly like I took to it. And I didn't meet anybody that did 3D for about three years in Salt Lake um, it, until, you know, I, I started to really kind of meet some, there, there really wasn't that many people in Salt Lake doing it back then, 93. Yeah. Um, definitely no schools teaching it. That was before the internet really took off, you know? So there's a few people that I kind of met and they, they, they held their information very like tight to the chest. Yeah. You know, the people that kind of we contracted to to do some of our 3D stuff when it was very beginning and um but it was just something that i instantly took to it's uh, it's really strange i mean they 
they sent me off to SIGGRAPH when I first got there and like, look, there's this new 3D stuff. Go to SIGGRAPH, go to all the presentations of all the different companies and um, pick out your software. And I picked out like uh, the alias Wavefront stuff and it came out with like 10 books. Literally, there was 10 full different oh, books. Huge. There were like huge and, binders. I think oh, I remember yeah. seeing it images was, of it. Yeah. yeah, it was literally like this many books because it was all that software which is cobbled together. Like they bought, okay, that that does modeling, we'll purchase mm -hmm. your company. This does lighting, we'll put you, you know, purchase that. And it was like this cobbled together thing. So it was a lot of books to learn. And I live that, you know, so it's, I just every day, thumbing through all that kind of stuff and it's just every day is like oh, i want to get i want to learn that i want to know this you know and my company actually was paying me to learn at the time too so oh, that's right it's just like that's awesome you know it's a, a, it just kind of was given to me in a way you yeah. know it's like he called me out of the blue to ask if i want to do it you know and incidentally when i where i was working he called me at work and i he said you want to do video games and then i said yes i do and then i walked into my bosses and said i quit and i left <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you doing at that no, time? i was at designing t-shirts oh. and um i was doing like gecko hawaii designs and things like that oh, wow. and on the airbrush you were airbrushing. well it wasn't airbrush at that time it was actually like photoshop one and two we started yeah, using yeah. for that and we did a lot of like where you like scratch out that black um i forget exactly what it was and then you do the light transfer all that kind of stuff to make the screen print you know it was like kind of mm -hmm. early oh, days actually on the silk screen yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah i remember those days yeah did you were you doing any of the exacto like you had the, i was definitely doing a lot of exacto that was work. uh that was an interesting thing we got to do that when i was in high school and yeah. that was one of my favorite things to do is when it was pretty fun we yeah. got to learn how to how silk screening worked and how to do that yeah like and right out of high fun. school that's all i did is just like do printing shirts you know put them on the dryer and fold them all that kind of stuff we worked yeah. for you know a really big company company that did like Hawaii like designs you know kind of stuff so so, <clears throat> so now you get into the video game mm -hmm. so, so they're paying you to learn yeah are you still doing art consistently like you're still doing the airbrushing on the side oh, yeah. you know as your passion yeah it's around that that time like 1993 or 94 um that I, I was like was one of my most prolific time I painted like two to three hundred like pictures like airbrushed you know, pretty good. I thought, you know, airbrush stuff. I was just like consistently producing, like consistently. And um, so from there, I just kind of made like a, I decided after the video game things like started to kind of like get too much for me. I wanted to like break out and kind of do my own thing. And around that time, all of a sudden there was a gold rush of for 3D artists, kind of how it is now for like Unreal people. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, yeah, if you know how to turn a computer on right now, head to California right now, <laughs> you can get a job for a hundred thousand dollars, you mm -hmm. know, like head out there now. And so I made a, a um, demo reel and yeah. chucked it in the mail, you know, put it in the, I actually put it in this, the SIGGRAPH box. That's just like the general, you know, put your demo reel in there. Yeah. And from there I got like three job offers. Like I was that on a zip drive or was it on a <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean more or less. I mean, it's like <laughs> ILM offered me a job. Like oh, and wow. this is me like sit like sitting in my, you know, room in um Salt Lake City, met like one or two other people, you know, didn't wasn't really trying, like, here's this thing, and then all of a sudden I had like all these job offers. And oh, you know, it's, wow, I bad. ended up that's taking so cool. a job with this company called the Orphanage. Yep. And the orphanage was an offshoot of ILM. It's like the the really talented people from ILM, the people that like uh, kind of kind of started their I forget what the rebel unit I guess mm -hmm. they were called back then. It's like the first people that were trying to like, hey, there's this new thing called a personal computer that where someone could sit there and do this artwork, you know. And it, we're looking for people that know how to do that kind of stuff. So I ended up working for the orphanage, and. Um, that was insane too, because I got dropped in as like a technical director and a compositor. I'd never done that work, you know? So it was like throwing a baby into water and, you know, I had to thrash around for a while and try to keep my nose above water. Yeah. Now, there. now when, when they threw you into it, did you ever get discouraged that, you know, oh shit, it's way above my head. I'm not going to oh, be able man. to do it or constantly. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I think I'm like most 3D artists. Like I, I just suffer from just thinking that I'm just totally faking everybody out the whole time. And <laughs> it's an imposter point, syndrome. I mean, yeah, at it's, any second they're going to yeah. discover that I've been messing with them. Yeah, and that's I, it, I struggle with run, that today. It runs rampant in our community. I mean, I mean, like a, a lot of our listeners, they, they always ask, like, "Hey, can you talk more about imposter syndrome?" Yeah. And I think oh, that God. you know, I mean, I know, you know, I know, I know people that you know have no business even thinking that they're an imposter and yet 
you know, they, they, they do, you know, yeah. I've had se several talks with uh, Carla Ortiz from, mm. you know, uh, Marvel Studios and Magic, Again, you know, like she still says that mm -hmm. occasionally to me. And I'm like, you know, like everybody I know looks up to you. So it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. It I is. mean, it's every single job in the 3d world too. I've ever gone to it's, I've never known how to do what they want me to do. Like yeah. every time it's learning. So you kind of are that way when you first start a thing, all of a sudden it's like, how are you gonna do this? I don't know. I'm going to have to bust my ass and figure it out. And it, it, you know, we, we live, you know, you know like, in our realm, in our in, in in this job that we have, being being a creative, right? It's the only job that I know where if you mess up, you just keep messing up until you get it right. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's not like a dentist. You know what I mean. Like a dentist is just like, oh, I pulled the wrong truth, yeah. wrong tooth. Yeah. yeah, you're you're pretty much done after that. Like yeah, you're, exactly. you're not going to get too many Can't clients that after that time. one. Well, you know, and it's very it's very it's very different than any other job that I've I think I've ever wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember working retail jobs and, and, you know, and, and, and food jobs and just sitting there and being like, it's the same thing every day. And, I, and it's killing me. You know yeah. what I mean? Certain people feel that way. You pretty Not much have that, to do those jobs too, in order yeah. to appreciate being an artist. Absolutely. You, know, you really don't understand how beautiful of a thing it is to sit and be able to be creative, you know, instead of doing like physical labor or, yeah. you know, things like that. So, well, and I think it goes back to, we've all had, I, I have that same feeling that, you know, it do you make it when you really actually have the skill mm. and looking at it they're relying on your creativity because they see it in you mm. you know not that you may not understand what the task is at hand mm. it's they hired you because they know you have that creativity inside of you and you're going to create a solution and come up with it yeah and so they have faith in you, mm -hmm. knowing that that creativity is going to flow out of you mm -hmm. and get on the screen and into the computer. Yeah, I, I think the problem for me is that I think that I'm going to let that person down that thinks that I can do it. And they hired me for some you know, big thing. And I'm like, OK, you know, it's, I'm not going to be able to, you know, I'm just going to embarrass the hell out of myself. I'm going to embarrass about the, the hell out of the guy who hired me, yeah. you know, down the line. And I sweat about it. But the thing is that that stress is the thing that makes me succeed at it because that stress is what makes me wake up in the morning and think about how I'm going to do it. It's a driving you know, force. Exactly. Yeah. So if I didn't have that stress and if I didn't have that um, impo the imposter syndrome, then I might be too, just too cocky and walk in and I can do it without having to really, you know, yeah. do the work. Well, <clears throat> then my question is to you, does that stress you out? Because I, I do, you're mentioning, I do the same mm -hmm. thing. Stress, so, yeah. you know, can I do it? Can I, can I succeed? Can you find balance no, w without putting that extra pressure on you and, and still create the solutions? Mm. Because it, it could be just a pattern that motivates us to push through, mm -hmm. but look at yourself and go, you know what? I've been doing this for so many years. Yeah. I, I'm just gonna calm myself mm -hmm. and I know I'm gonna come up with the solutions yeah. because you've got the experience. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing, the thing with me is that I always go through that at the beginning until I start showing stuff and I get some kudos. Like it's the first couple of times that they see what I do and they're like, they're like, Oh, that's great. Or, you know, nice work. And the second they say that nice work, all of that goes away. And I'm like, okay, I got a job to do. Let's yeah. make this as good as I can humanly do it. Yeah. yeah. That, I always try to figure, cause like I said, I do that myself too. Um, planting your feet, and just pushing through it. I guess it's just the motivation and it's that process that we keep on yeah. doing. I mean, to you don't have a choice ourselves. in a lot of ways. Like once you accept it, you know, you can't say no to stuff. You know, if, if you if you need a gig and if it's a cool gig, no matter how scared you are, you can't say no. So yeah. you say, yes, I can definitely do that. And then you, then I stress out like a, you know, crazy maniac <laughs> for a while. And then and I figure it out. And, and that comes into, um, Justin, you just mentioned it, that, you know, doing that, you know, flipping burgers is the monotony yeah. of it. That do we go search for those challenges mm. because we know it's going to motivate us and yeah. elevate us to the next, you know, the next phase or, or the yeah. next level. Mm -hmm. And we live for that adrenaline yeah. rush. You, you know, I think speaking it's problem of that. solving. I think, I think you mm. have, you have to like, you have to like puzzles. Yeah. Exactly. Or you have to like, keeps the brain something active. Out, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I I think one of the most when I was I was mentioning one of my pro most prolific times and that time was when I was printing T-shirts. So all day, you know, squeegee, squeegee to take this off. And it's like super repetitive. The mo mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, 
production line style stuff. Mm -hmm. And so all day long, all of a sudden, at the end of the day, I'd have a painting in my head, you know, because you're just doing that. And all of a sudden, oh, oh, this is a good idea, you know. And then I made like, uh, I came up when I was doing that printing stuff, I came up with like a t shirt design. I had this design that was kind of popular in Utah for a while called White Boy Desert Wear. And it's <laughs> a white boy desert. Uh, yeah, wear. white boy desert wear. Nice. And actually, um, I never, um, uh, you know, made it made it mine legally or anything. And then Eminem came out with his white boy stuff after. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it was just it, it's something about doing like you know work. It's like it that I think it's so good and creative for you. You know, if you're doing physical stuff, your mind has nowhere to go but just to make stuff. At least that's how and it does with it me. Calms the mind. Yeah. So you can listen to your soul. Yeah. 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 It's important. Like, right. So like, so y- you also have quite the resume of working with musicians. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. It's a, uh, let's see. I, I worked with um, Roger Waters for a while on the war, the wall tour mm-hmm. thing. So they, they sent me to New York and put me up in a hotel and I worked, you know, right with him. And that was like the, you know, the 300 foot wall projection thing. And, um, but I've worked with lots of a lot of different artists. Um, I worked with this band called Tool for a while, and they they've been Small doing band. concerts, you know, forever, like consistently. And you know, it's like they had my artwork up there, fifty feet tall, you know, with their music, of course, you know, just yeah. sitting in there and seeing that is just like the most most mind blowing thing possible. It, was, it had to be and so surreal. Like were you really just sitting was, back yeah. and just being like, it's, "What and, is happening?" And they had like were. The last decade, the, the very last image that came up at the end of the show was my image. And it stayed up there for like 15 minutes as they like, you know, talked, walked around and all that kind of oh, stuff. Wow, so trip. it was just, it was just amazing. And um, so through Tool, um, who also, I worked on a bunch of their like album stuff, like the album artwork for the 10,000 Days um, album that came out. And um, so through that, I, I met Maynard, who's the singer of Tool, and he's got another band or a couple different bands. Um, he's got the perfect circle and Pussifer and I've worked for all his things. I'm the only artist who worked for all of Maynard's bands. I'm pretty sure 99.9% sure I am. So, um, <laughs> and I'm working with him right now. Basically I'm after I leave here, I'm going to go work on some more video stuff for him. Oh, that's awesome. And does yeah. it feel I like work? Tool. Like, because you're jumping around. We, I know you have a day job, but you're still working. It's Saturday. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're, you're going to go and work uh, more. Yeah. You have kind of no choice sometimes. I mean, when you get cool projects, it's like the world kind of has to fade away. You know, it's, you got to go for it because there's downtime where you can all of a sudden feel, you know, life again. There's always downtime. So yeah. <clears throat> seeing that you're working like that, how do you put balance into your life that when you're doing all this artwork, what do you do to go ground yourself? Oh man. I mean, it's, the thing that I personally do is I ride this thing called a one wheel. And so I was just going to say it's wheel probably is. the one wheel. Yeah. yeah it's, and so I, I've gone like over a thousand miles on this thing, you know, just purely downtown. And, um, so that's, I love to get on Like in the morning I get on it and I go do my, you know, thing, couple of miles, two or three miles. And, you know, before I knew it, I had 1200 miles on the thing, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, you know, especially with uh, all the protests that have been going on, you know, here in downtown LA, you know, we're, just I actually live a block from the studio uh, from just from the studio here and um, it's been like a major thoroughfare of all the you know the all of the different protests and riots and yeah, all that kind of yeah. stuff and so I've, I've been on my one wheel filming it near consistently and um, so that's what I do I mean I just try to I try to always separate myself from work really is how I go about it it's like I've found I mean I'm pretty bench like the last 20 years have been consistently working like when I want to work and I found that you can always get a job when you really truly don't want one <laughs> <laughs> like when you're just sick of working and you're like yeah. okay I'm gonna work on my own artwork now screw it I got a little bit of money in my bank yeah so I'm gonna live off that and do my own artwork you know and so the second I want to do that that's when I get all of a sudden a pile of jobs and I go oh all right Let's it's hard to, it's hard to say no maybe eight months from now i'll be able to do my own artwork and so <laughs> I, I see that you know the light at the end of the tunnel and i i head towards that and then hope that it then that i can you know yeah. chill out relax during the day you know wake up when i want but it never seems to happen that way so then then do you go home and do some of your artwork just to squeeze in for personal 
you oh, know, yeah. personal joy. Just yeah, to... near consistently. So at, at my house, I mean, I do a lot of virtual production stuff. And I'm sure we'll get to that. But at my house, I have these two laser projectors and two huge walls. My girlfriend's super cool. She let us move into this place that's more or less a cave. It's in the very bottom of this apartment. It's like this little stretch of windows at the side. But other than that, it's completely black and dark. And we moved in there just so I can test out these video walls. So it's wow. like a video, it's like a virtual production thing. It's connected to Unreal, so I can ha have like different worlds in there. I can spin it around. These two big things are like on, you know, the corner from each other. And so that's that's been my focus. Like anytime I have extra time, I'm trying to make worlds for that or try to figure out, you know, different, you know, things with that control of that. It's, it's, extremely... it's, been, it's been really fun watching you play with these things on Instagram, like cool. testing things out, <laughs> like you have a nature like it almost looks like it's like it and they're they're so they're so like vibrant too. oh yeah like 4k the for these laser, laser projectors, projectors are amazing they're no joke yeah yeah it's, they're, i'm but blown it, away it looks like he's like it's like a like a, a mountain you know mountainscape mm -hmm. where it's all nice and peaceful and then the next day it's like cyberpunk dystopian <laughs> and it's great yeah, you know it's cool it's really really neat it's, you know? it's also cool too just as a quick aside there is that basically i have google um like the what are they called the chrome chromecast on all of my projectors that i have like five or six projectors around so mm -hmm. um it's and it shows my um photographs like from my photograph uh, my google on my phone mm -hmm. so i could take a picture of something and then it'll pop up on these different things they're like the world's biggest like photo frames more or less oh, and so cool. i take a picture of my house and then the picture of my house comes up on the screen and i take a picture of that and then the picture of the picture comes up and i take a picture of that and it's starting to all warp so i'm doing this crazy like art experiment of different <laughs> that's cool anyway so, so you're, <laughs> no you're always pushing yourself so mm -hmm. we get from you that the passion is there oh, the yeah. artist seems like it's never stops growing no hopefully not yeah i, I mean that's what fills us right yeah. that's that's what keeps us going yeah. that's what gets you up every morning exactly do you it's ever go reason. through like highs and lows where you're just like, oh, I, 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 want, I want to create, but then I don't want to create? Yeah, like I'm, it, I, I, I experienced that a lot. It, yeah, it's, it's been a kind of a, a major thing in my life. I, I, I'm pretty much sure I'm bipolar. I've never been tested or whatever. But there was a time like around when I was um, working for the Noman School of Visual Effects. Um, where it was, I, I created their first um, ZBrush DVD. I created the first ZBrush DVD ever made. And I, think, I taught. I the, think we have that here, actually. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I taught the very first ever ZBrush class, and um, so I was, I was doing a lot of lectures and things like that. Everybody all of a sudden was interested in ZBrush. What What year was this? Um, two thousand four. Two thousand four. Two thousand five. Do Do you remember who was in that class? The yeah, it's that class actually had um, Neville Page in it. <laughs> nice. It had. Um, Oh, there was a fam there was an actor guy that I'm not um but there it was it was like the the top level dudes like in that class because everybody wanted to take it and they had like kind of the first you know dip, dibs on it oh wow that's right and cool. so I started doing these all these like lectures and like four or five hundred people things like that and I it was around the time like ZBrush wasn't fully formed yet yeah there was a lot of stuff it couldn't do now it's you know, top notch, you can pretty much make anything in it in any ways. But at that point, it wasn't quite there. So to do a lecture, you'd always have people say, Okay, cool. So how do I do this? And I, you know, couldn't tell them how to do that. Well, how you do it is you buy Maya <laughs> and do it that way, you know, so it's like, anyway, it became like a huge stress for me, like major, like I started really like getting stressed out, like all these, like my inbox just completely filled. It's like, with questions maybe somebody and, like yeah like zbrush was getting famous it wasn't me like zbrush was getting famous so everybody's like how do you you know do zbrush i was teaching the very first class and i just got so overwhelmed it like burned me out hardcore mm. and I, I i literally stopped doing cg for like two or three years after that oh really wow. like so it was like a low for me I, I started looking around like what can i do to make the same kind of money that i'm making now and i'm like oh shit <laughs> there's, there's probably nothing that I could do right now to make, you know, the, the CG kind of money. So yeah. I was like, all right, I'm going to go back. And that's actually where I met Justin is when I first went back. That was the very oh, first really? time. That was, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, your voices, right? I got super depressed for a while and then I kind of came back. And then I, I always like when a company contacted me, I was all, I could work for you, but I'm going to work at home. I never wanted to go in house until the, when we were, imaginary forces contacted me and said they had a black cells um the title sequence for black cells and they showed me some of the stuff they're doing 
And I'm like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll go back for that. And that, that was like my return. And that's actually where I first met Justin. Yeah, yeah that was a, that was a fun, fun crew we had there for a little that bit. That was yeah. an amazing thing. I mean, that thing still holds up, I think. I mean, it got um, nominated for like an Emmy. Yeah, and all it that did. Kind of stuff. Yes, it did. It was yeah. badass. Yeah, that was a that was a fun job. It Jamin was. was there. Remember Jamin? Oh, yeah. yeah of yeah, course yeah. I do. Yeah, there are a lot of cool people. Actually. Margaret Doss was there. Yeah. 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 It's like so many people that it's like I talked to most of the people that you know, from that time. It's, and I, that's not true of all the things that I've done, but for some reason there was something just kind of magical about that whole time. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. So I think Ryan, yeah, Ryan Summers was there. That's, that's how mm -hmm. I got in there was because Ryan Summers, uh, put my name in, I think for, for sculpting. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a fun job. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I was that actually blown back. away. I remember like seeing your, your modeling work and going, maybe you know again with the whole imposter syndrome like okay there's a real artist you know oh, let's pff, let's not even. let's like let's just try not to get too close to that guy maybe they won't compare my stuff with his you know mind-blowingly good you're hilarious you're hilarious didn't didn't you also do like the the box art for zbrush at one point i did yeah what version was that do you know that was the it was zbrush two zbrush three so zbrush three was the first time it became fully 3d Be, prior to that it was 2.5d yeah where you would draw stuff on screen, but once you put it on screen, it was stuck there. You yeah. know, it was like a Photoshop file, but with depth more or less. Yeah. And I actually did some pretty crazy artwork just doing that, just dropping stuff on, you know, mm -hmm. and building stuff up. Um, I look back at it now, it's like, man, I had a lot of patience back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the limit limit of the technology, and you you just deal with it because there isn't any other way. Yeah, but not only that, it's like when at that time before everything came out, that was freaking cool. Like, look at this. Yeah. You can put stuff on. You can move the light around. And, you know, so I was yes. just blown away by that, you know. Um, dude, a lot of people so, don't even realize that ZBrush originally was a painting program. Oh, yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. That's all it was supposed to be. Exactly, yeah. And it was, what, 30 bucks back then, too? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. It was like $30. It's, the That's crazy. PixLogic yeah. gave me two copies of ZBrush back then, and I haven't bought ZBrush since then because it's been a free upgrade. So I feel horrible about that. One of the only companies that. that still does that, which the, is amazing. The, the second they charge for it, I'm going to buy like seven copies just to give back a little bit because I, it's like <laughs> I've used ZBrush professionally for like, you know, 12, 12 years now on their dime. But yeah. they asked, it was cool. They, they asked me to do the cover for their box. And so um, I, I had um, Pixelator, the guy who wrote ZBrush. Like yeah. a lot of people don't know this. Like the main ZBrush was made by one dude. And I've always said he's from the future and he just kind of takes and like, here's ZBrush 2. He looks to see what kind of technology is available. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, they're ready for ZBrush 4. He's got them all just in a cabinet because he's from the future. <laughs> and he just puts them but anyway, they're already they're <laughs> yeah, already made. Exactly. He's just waiting. So that guy came to my house in San Francisco. With just he, he and I, that dude came to my house and like taught me a bunch of ZBrush stuff so I can make that cover. Oh, wow. It was amazing. And it, it, speaking of that, it's a that time was really cool too because i did the cover for maya maya 7 as well <laughs> in the same year that same year and i went to oh, sigraph wow. and when i walked into sigraph there was the maya booth and they had printed my thing like 15 feet high 10 feet from it was the zbrush booth and they printed my thing like 15 <laughs> feet high so i was like my like i could have just like okay like left on a high point right then you're like yeah my career's you know, done like exactly I've the high point. I, i'm i'm good I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to mess this up. I'm out of here. That's pretty rad. It's such a it's it's a very surreal feeling. Big time. You know, to see I your art. I had a similar I had a similar thing at a comic con where I turned the turned the corner, and uh, it, it's it's funny because I, I didn't know anybody at, at Wacom you know at the time, but I turned the corner and I did a tutorial for like digital tutors uh, like a long time ago, and there it was huge <laughs> on the comic con floor like Changes a billboard, you. and you're just like. And I didn't know that they were doing that. Mm. And I kind of had a small panic attack because I was like, what's happening? <laughs> okay. And one of the, Pam, uh, this lady that she, she no works man? for uh, oh. Wacom and mm. we've become really good friends since then. She immediately comes out and she's like, oh, my God, did we did we not use you? Did we did not we didn't get permission to use the artwork. And then I was like, oh, well, I mean, it says digital tutors. So I assume you had permission to use it. She's like, oh, thank God. And then, you know, from there. You know, mm -hmm. I, I had a really good, you know, uh, you know, funny story with, you know, meeting the Wacom people. Mm -hmm. and, and ever since them, you know, like I've always done stuff with them whenever they're in That's town. Great. And they're some of the greatest, nicest There's people. There's no better feeling than seeing your stuff printed out, you know, that this oh, is yeah. good enough. Here you go. You know. 
Yeah. And that's, you know, I really like that about uh, Lightbox when mm. Lightbox was going on last year. Mm. Uh, when Right when you walked in, I don't know if you guys got a chance to go, but uh, mm. it was just like every, almost everyone that w- that had a booth, I feel like had a giant like 20 foot banner of their art. Mm. And it was really cool to see mm. and, and like walk in and see. Yeah. Love it. It was really great. I wanted to circle back because mm. a lot of our artists ask and they reach out about burnout. Mm. So oh, yeah. you're mentioning those three years that you were just like, you had to step away. Mm -hmm. I understand that sometimes the pressure, you you just got to clear your head. But what did you do through that time to actually clear yourself of that burnout that allowed you to get back into it and realize, okay, I'm grounded. I can do this again. It's interesting because I don't know if I really did get to that point, except for that, like I was saying, the the opportunity that presented itself. And it was the opportunity that made me go, oggity, 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 you know, slap myself and pour some (laughs) cold water on there. Like, okay, you got something cool that's happening, you know, so I, it brought me out of it somehow. I don't know what it was and I've been fine since then, but. Yeah. So it's, it, once again, and I don't know, uh, but I'm going to assume is that when that burnout hit, it's something internal, right? It's something that we're doing to ourselves. Yeah. Whether, and I don't know if it's an insecurity or a mental dump that pushes us away, Mm -hmm. but it sounds like, you know, that job elevated so much and drew you out of it that you could push it aside because if that job didn't come along, you might have rode that out even longer. No, you're right. I I know I would have. I I really at that point had no desire to do 3D. And and you know around that time there was kind of a plateau of like technology for some reason. There was a chunk of years there that nothing like the computer power speed didn't really improve. <laughs> Software wasn't really improving, and um, people's expectations on jobs were improving. You know, like I yeah. mean, they're like getting more expectations, but nothing nothing was really changing back then so it was just like kind of like a dead point for me like as far as 3d goes but yeah no it's interesting because because i've been through that too of of you just feel like you've plateaued or it's burn and so so kind of that inspirational moment to learn something new Mm -hmm. to challenge you and push you to the next level shook you out of it to go you know what i'm just in my head exactly i I need to go and i need to push forward yeah and then working with other artists you know like justin seeing his work all that kind of stuff just kind of made me like okay i can i can really enjoy this again you know and it made me like try to improve myself so i can kind of hang with you know the talents of like the justin style people so, so with that, then that brings you're, up. My, you're giving me way too much credit. Just way too much. Uh, credit. But the thing is, I'm, I'm starting not. to blush right I'm, now. <laughs> I'm really not Kudos. though. I love your artwork, man. Oh, I'm thanks, super man. impressed. I, I kind of want to just do the rest of the the interview about Justin. No, 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 no. We've already, we've already done that. Nobody <laughs> okay. wants to hear it's it. Episode anymore. one. <laughs> episode one. <laughs> episode one. <laughs> so, with this, is it a possibility that um, d- did you have a time that you felt you made it? Hmm. That, that's I. You know, I. I think right now, like within the last couple of weeks, I'm starting to feel that way. It's just I started a new job like last week, and that's so. Yeah, and w- w- where did you start? We 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 just recently had, uh, I believe, your 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 boss on yes, the show. Actually, my my boss, Felix yeah. George or Felix Jorge or however he says it. <laughs> um, yeah. So Happy Mushroom hired me last week. Congratulations! To be a by virtual the way. art department supervisor. Ooh. So we're working on an extremely cool project and, um, it's, it's completely new to me. You know, it's, I'm back in the imposter syndrome again. So it's like, Hey, now you're a supervisor and be, be a supervisor. So now I'm like struggling, trying to figure all that out, you know, like with this really cool project, you know, and talking to some amazing people, um, who are actually really welcoming, even though I'm obviously a little bit of a greenhorn right now with it but it's a whole new world for me but the job that i got and the project that i'm working on um which i can't mention i was um, just gonna say that i was gonna ask you what it is <laughs> no, i can't it's I a can't bucket say. list for sure it, it's something that most people will probably see in the next couple of years i'm sure yeah. like most people in the world will probably end up seeing it but um it was it a childhood passion project to work on um possibly possibly okay possibly. you don't have to say anything I, i'm yeah. just poking I mean, you digging i'm poking <laughs> you i'm teasing it's, you yeah. you know that yeah. you're getting me in trouble too <laughs> No, but it's, it's finally like <laughs> where really like last week is where I'm like, you know, this, this might end up being okay. 
Yeah, you that's know, cool. Where I, I just, like, I'm getting a little older, you know, I, I've been in the box, on the box doing stuff for 20 years. You know, I've, I've been a lead a lot and I've been, you know, in, in charge of people, but not to this level. And now mm -hmm. it's like they're saying I'm not even going to be on the box at all anymore. You know, so it's it's 100 percent of being, um, you know, divvying out the the work, the work to force, other the people. Workload, yeah. Yeah. Figuring out schedules and doing lots and lots of meetings, all that kind of stuff. So it's a completely new world. And, and, and this is and this is like your first kind of forte into the the world of Unreal, right? Yes. Well, Using I mean, scans and I, all that worked, stuff. yeah, I mean, I worked at Fox VFX Lab for right, a couple right. of years mm -hmm. and they, they're like the, the majors of um, virtual production, you know, so. Uh, so they they kind of trained me on all that kind of stuff, and they they I got into that job. I was the first person that Glenn hired for that. Give a shout and out to Glenn Derry. Yeah, Glenn Derry. He's the man. He really is. Who we have cool to get guy. in on the show. You should sure. get Glenn on here. Yeah, he's a, he's very um, he tells wonderful stories. You'll, <laughs> you'll enjoy it. Um, so he hired me without knowing any Unreal, and we'll probably go over this, but it's like the, right now with the virtual production is going to save the world because of the pandemic. You know, you're able to do a lot of the stage stuff remote um you know he, he they can't find unreal people because it's such a new thing you know you have to really focus on that and so he again i got hired to learn you know it's so i didn't know about it and um they hired me like as a lead artist for that we worked on a bunch of cool projects a bunch that were canceled after a year and a half like mouse guard mm -hmm. you know Ugh. things like that I just hate uh, hearing. I, I hate hearing uh, how that was yep. canceled. I was so oh, looking man. forward to that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was really painful. I mean, we did um, Call of the Wild, so we did mm -hmm. the entire movie Call of the Wild in previs. That was the mm -hmm. first thing that we did, and then that was good. That came out, and then we jumped on Mouse Guard, which was like a passion project. Like a, just a, like everybody was just so into it. And oh, shout we, out to West Ball. Yeah, West vision. Ball. Yeah, he, another he's another guy, guy that get in here. Yeah. yeah, you really should. He, yeah, he's he took to Unreal like he he knew even less than I did when he started, but he picked it up real quick. Uh, no, he he did that short too back in the day yeah, too. What yeah, was it? He, was he it Ruin? Famous was it for called that. Ruin or something? Relic, or Relic, something? Relic or Ruin? Ruin, 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 right. Ruin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he he got um the um what were those movies? What was those movies called again that he did? The Maze the, Runner. Maze Runner. Yeah, the Maze Runner. He got the Maze Runner basically from that short. A CG yeah. artist that did a CG short and he got a, to be a director. Yeah, J I don't know JJ it, saw it, right? And then picked I'm him not up to work sure how or a something? point from that point to that, but he did that and then he got that from it. Yeah, so yeah, that's great. To me, it's extremely impressive. You well, know, once that. again, Ruin showed he had vision mm -hmm. and he could tell a story and he yeah. could execute and then yeah. he could execute and execute yeah. as well. That guy's a talented son. I know. Man. I think, I think John Park, I think John Park actually did concepts for his short. Hmm. If I remember correctly, uh, you know, um, I'm sure John will tell me. But mm. like, yeah, I think, I think I went. Uh, didn't Noman? Noman did a he did a talk at Noman one did one he? year. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think that's where I saw him and mm. and saw his story about that. Yeah, that's a great Amazing. short. If you guys are curious, you should definitely check out. You know, West Ball and and how yeah. he got. Yeah, he he did that before a lot of people were doing shorts. You know. His, yeah. When when it came out, it is like apartment with like one something. computer and what yeah. was it? Moto like Moto was exactly. that's what he was using. Yeah. Yeah, and he's he he pushed it further than most people were pushing stuff. You know, for a one man team, it was you know it's really very cinematic. impressive. Amazing. Very impressive. Right. It's one of those moments like when you see it and you're like, one guy did all this. And you're just like, I've got no excuse. <laughs> I've got no excuse. Exactly. Yeah, and it's interesting. I, and I didn't realize we worked on a lot of the same projects. Mm -hmm. Like. Call of the Wild, Mouse Guard. Mm. It's interesting. It is a very small industry. Small, yeah. it, it is. It's and, smaller and than people realize for it sure. It is. And we're all talking now with mm. virtual production coming out mm -hmm. of what are the solutions, as you said, the pandemic. Uh, there is a lot of stuff going on because it, it's a solution right now and people need to hear solutions. Yeah. And it, it reminds me kind of of the uh, late 90s when all the so 3d software came out mm -hmm. we're kind of at that moment Gold again rush. of it's turning a direction because we're going back to virtual production designing in the machines we're building stuff mm -hmm. out pre-production that we're getting up on set and we're shooting in camera again yeah. which excites me because guess what we're going to be able to plan oh, and pre-plan before we start shooting everything. Man, you know, yeah. I, I think production designers and art directors, they love, they really love it now a little bit more. So instead of the green screen stuff where nothing existed, 
there's actually, you know, they can see it like in camera, you know, really what it looks like. And the other cool thing too, is it's really brought like practical stuff back. Yeah. Like all the LED walls that surround it, you still need to have all your practical things. And we've seen in things like the Mandalorian, how good that looks, you know, yeah. where you have a character that has like a reflective helmet, you'll be able to see, you know, in camera, you'll be yeah. able to see the reflection of the fake environment on yeah himself including and other characters and other it's all yeah. it's, it's there you get it in in camera in that shot exactly like if you compare like the amazing. mandalorian to like the prequels of star wars yeah you know you look at them now it's like it looks so you know kind of pasted on because nothing reflects anything else you know so it's kind of like a new new level now the virtual that's, and that's something the new star wars movies have really done is like the 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 light that is their lightsaber is really reflected in almost everything mm. now where like if you watch the originally you know it's just like yeah, it's just the the brightest thing in the room and there's just nothing yeah, coming no, off of it whatsoever exactly. yeah yeah that, one of my favorite scenes in the new uh what was it is it rise of skywalker is the young young leia young luke where they mm. were training in the forest and you're mm. just like oh my gosh this looks amazing yeah yeah. And at first I thought it was like, oh, like they did amazing, you know, digital doubles. And it's like, no, mm. it was pure compositing. I think that's uh -huh. how they did those those mm. one shots where they looked young, which is mm. crazy. Interesting. Now, and what is really great when technology usually comes around and it changes, mm. people lose their job. Yeah. But the way this works is no one's really losing their job because we need the artists. We're just, just kind of shifting. Yeah. We're yeah. shifting it to the front end. And a lot of these visual effects houses will just take a third of their team and put it on the front end and there'll be slight adjustments through designers, production designers, mm -hmm. art directors, costumers. No one's going away because you need their expertise. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's just becoming more efficient in a process and they're going to be able to be a little more freer mm -hmm. in this process, which is exciting because once it again, it takes had the pressure off post. Oh, yeah. It takes the pressure off post. Puts it in pre. Fix it and in pre. it'll be much more efficient in post because, mm -hmm. once again, if a normal pre-production is about three months, we'll, we'll give it sometimes longer. But now we're going to have to add about another 20 weeks on mm -hmm. to this so we can actually build all the sets. Yeah. We can model it and all that, which that gives the production designer, the costumer, the art mm -hmm. director, all these people extra time to actually yeah. plan and hone it in yeah. and hone it in that when you step on the set that your Bible is built out, it's locked down and you're just efficient shooting through these scenes. Yeah. How great is that? Yeah, it's changing everything. It's, it really is. is. It's a win-win situation for everybody. I think so too. It just, it's, we're in transition right now, you know, and I was lucky enough to start, you know, working with the real time stuff you know a few years ago it's like right before i worked with fox i worked for the comedian john stewart and he was creating uh, a real-time um animation show more or less were you, were you working with billy brooks on that yeah well yeah, yeah in fact we were billy. we were in his Rebel office unit more yeah. or less with john stewart yeah yeah so that that ended up getting canceled too so i worked on that for a, a year and that got canceled then i went into other stuff and got canceled but I I, I How was it working with John? I heard he's nothing but a delight. He is amazing. That guy, yeah. he's so cool. He's an animal rescue guy. He's got huge farms yeah, of rescued yeah, animals. That's what I want to do. Yeah. If if you rescue animals, like to me, you're cool as hell. <laughs> so another pointing out doing research on you meets mm. was very difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I have to do my homework all the time before these shows. <laughs> and looking at me, he hasn't updated his IMDB. Mm -hmm. Uh there's no. He hasn't updated his art station. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going through all this research, and once mm -hmm. again, we got to do research because you've been doing this for so many years, there wasn't much. Yeah. You're very humbled. Well, I, I literally got, I got sick of being contacted more or less. So I stopped doing portfolios and I mean, I've been, I will do it if I ever need to, but consistently I've got work. I don't know how, I think it's because of the name meets. I think that's what it is. It kind of separated me somehow. <laughs> I would, I would say you're kind of infamous. That's some, something is happened. That, I don't know. It's infamous uh, it's good called, or bad. It's called I don't know. talent. Um, you you got to give know. yourself it's, some. It's called luck. Credit. It's pure luck. <laughs> <laughs> pure luck. Because more or less like people come to me for work. I, I very, very rarely go, hey, will you give me a job? It's more like I want to not work at all and I want to relax and then, okay, I'll work on your thing. Yeah. Spoken but. like a true artist. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's amazing. And we, we do have to say new artists coming up. You do have to understand how to put a portfolio oh, together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Zero absolutely. doubt about that. I mean, you really have to do it. 
we're we we're here to talk about 10k hours. Mm -hmm. You've put your time in. Yeah, 30k. And you've elevated at least yourself. at least probably 40, well, maybe 40, probably 40k. You, you know, you've elevated yourself that you don't have to do those things. And I just want to identify oh. for new artists coming up that oh, man. you, you got to do your portfolios. You got to put the time in. Yeah, we're, we're talking to meets that that has challenged himself, well, pushed yourself, mm -hmm. and constantly push yourself to the next level yeah and I, and I got lucky early on too where there was basically nobody doing it i i lucked into getting you know doing 3d i i was offered the thing to do 3d told to, to learn it and i did and um it's completely different nowadays where you know the schools are pumping out artists we have the internet you know where you have every bit of information you'd ever want <laughs> you know it's completely different world you know of that so i can't even i think that if i were to do it again if things were different i don't know if i even would have made it into the you know the industry i mean i yeah, might it's have a, it's it's a very strange it's hard thing to, look to get at, in you know? like i i can't remember there was a documentary uh, you know i watched a while ago and it was more basically on on music right where it was just like you've never had more access to knowledge you've never had more mm. access to uh, you know uh, you know like synthesizers that you know back in the day would be 40 or 50 grand to yeah. buy, which now you can almost download an app on your phone oh, and yeah. get the same thing. On your thing. phone, you have all that. But like, there was a guy who was just like, yeah, but we're never going to discover the next Beatles again hmm. because they're lost in the sea of, yeah. you know, and he, the, the, he was using, he, the term he used was, was, was mediocre. Hmm. And I was like, well, that's a little harsh, but you know, but it is, it is very crazy. It is very, very hard to get Can't discovered. Imagine. And if you're not pushing yourself and putting yourself out there, if you don't have an Instagram, if you don't yeah. have not publishing your own on Twitter, if you don't have an art station, you know, like, you know, what is your, what would your advice be to an artist that's mm -hmm. trying to get into the industry right now? That, that, How to get found? I mean, cause that, that's a hard thing to tackle right now. You just now. gotta be freaking good. You gotta like, be really good. like super good. And of course to get, get super good is you gotta put in those 10,000 hours. Yeah, I mean, but the quality of artwork that's coming out of schools like Noman now, mm -hmm. I look at that and go, holy moly, these guys are good. You know, yeah. they're, they're coming in, they're learning from the industry pros that have been there. You know, they're downloading all their information to them and they're, they're good and very intimidating, you know, I think. But actually on the flip side of that, as somebody who, who hires people and works with people, I see a lot of kick-ass portfolio and I may hire them for something. And a lot of times they, their portfolio looks super good, but actually working with them, they have a really hard time of actually achieving something. Like they can make something on a good maybe. and yeah. maybe those instructors really held their hands through this stuff, each, you know, all the levels. You, you, know. you, you bring that up and it's, it's a really good point. It is. Um, I have a lot of discussions about it, about um, the schools are amazing to teach the art, mm -hmm. but there's a part that a lot of the up and coming artists don't understand how to work in a work environment, a mm -hmm. team environment. Mm -hmm. And it's Major. something that I've started holding close to help bridge that because I hire people too. And you want people to be part of a team. Mm -hmm. And how do you educate them? Because the schools are doing an amazing job teaching the art. They well, really it are. Used to be, it used to be keystone projects, right? Like back in the day, like I remember, so when, when, I, when I was going to school, um, like my first days in like college, I wasn't necessarily trying to do CG, but like you would always hear about like the senior class, like, you know, they, for half that year, mm -hmm. they were all working on one project as a group. And that was the training of, how to work in a team. Hmm. And I don't know if, if I, I think Noman still does it on occasion, but like, I, f I feel like, you know, like that's, that's the best way to learn is to become teammates with exactly. your fellow classmates because this industry is super small. Oh yeah. So like if you work really well on a team hmm. with your fellow classmate and your classmate gets into blizzard or something like that's that, hundred percent. when blizzard needs somebody, he's going to speak up and go, Hey, yeah. hire my buddy. Cause we were in the trenches together, you yeah, know, exactly. like, that's, it, that's basically where I've yeah. got like 99% of my work is I work with somebody and we do a good job somewhere and guaranteed next time they go to a new place, Hey, we need mo modelers or we need, you know, artists, you know, I may get that call, you know? So as after 20 years of doing it, I think I've grown enough of a network out there, um, that I have kind of a higher possibility of getting jobs maybe. Yeah. And you're extremely humble. Uh, yeah. And you just can't be a dick. That that actually is a huge, huge thing right there. Cause <laughs> don't the, be a jerk. 
be like it's really hard to be a good artist and not have an ego like in fact i i kind of think that in order to be a good artist you have to have kind of an ego mm -hmm. you know you have to have that um you have to not doubt yourself and to not doubt yourself kind of makes you, you kind of have to have an ego or else you don't ever try stuff or you're scared that oh that might be too weird or people are going to think this is weird you know that so i think one of the biggest keys for artists to get into the industry is to get rid of that ego you know kill your ego and get you know, humble yourself get weird with it and learn yeah just take it <laughs> just take it you can now how, how do you say it where it's you can be proud of your work mm -hmm. and feel it's good mm -hmm. and you've challenged yourself mm -hmm. but that is a personal private moment yeah. that, that you need to keep yeah. inside of you exactly you do not walk onto a work floor mm -hmm. and throw no. it out that I am fantastic no. and I am great yeah. Yeah. because you realize either next I walk into the door or that senior guy is going to kick your ass. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's uh, I, I kind of was like that. I think when I started and you know, it took just a few times of going, Oh wait, I'm not the shit really. You know, I am yeah. shit. But, um, it's important once again, um, to stay humble. Yeah. Be open to new experiences. So, important. um, I, I love that you mentioned that you just keep on challenging yourself. Mm -hmm. I would love to try to deep dig deeper in that of what pushes and pushes you to do that, mm -hmm. um, to challenge yourself, to well, keep on learning. I think a lot of times for me, it's new technology or faster technology that makes me want to use it and push it. It's like nowadays, it's like the, the big hotness is real time graphics. So, yeah. you know, the last decades, you know, waiting, like I mentioned, when I first started, I'd turn a model and five minutes later, you'd see the other side of the wireframe or whatever. But now everything that you see in there, the stuff that we were waiting overnight, we had to go to coffee breaks to render before we could even see it. That's it's real time instant. now. Yeah. So that kind of stuff excites me right there. So I can move a light and I see a shadow, you know, with nice fall off. I see a reflection of something. So, so you've seen like from from Stone Stonehenge all the way to like the Empire. You More know? or less. Yeah, exactly. I, I've seen the whole thing. And I, I think that I've. Like you know, to the Dubai I, Tower. I have as, your... Yeah, I have as much time in like virtual reality as like anybody in the world. And even uh, when I say virtual reality, it's it's even just working on a flat mod model, like a you know, flat monitor on a, with a model. It's you see it in 3D when you're working on it. You can turn it, you know, you you get a sense of that depth mm -hmm. in there. So the me turning models and like, you know, in that 3D Cartesian space in there, being able to rotate it around. I think I have spent as much time as probably anybody in this world, basically. Because yeah. I, you know, it's, it's you've not, been there from the beginning. It, yeah. It's not just my work. It's also my passion outside of, you know, it's yeah. the stuff that I want to make. So I, a lot of time, you know, so it, it's a cautionary tale. So you can see how I turned out. <laughs> so, so try to step away, yeah. get, see some sun, you know, jog in the park <laughs> if you can. No, it's you talk about the balance because the balance is so important because you can get lost and you can get burnout. Oh, yeah. So so finding that balance is important. I know we're starting to run out of time. Hmm. So I, I'm i going to let you answer one last question, <laughs> but we're definitely going to have you back because yeah, you're going to come back on, man. Because yeah. I want to know that show that you can't talk about. <laughs> yeah, once, that, once that comes out. Yeah, hmm. we, we will rock that. Cool. Um, in, did you go to college for any of this? No, I, I barely graduated high school. Like oh. <laughs> I was one of those bad kids that got sent to the, the special high school for kids that don't know how to go to class very well. And yeah, so it's I, I like smoked a lot of marijuana when I was a kid and you know, just, I wanted to do artwork. And I, I literally, yeah. I, I was like the guy like that you see like playing basketball really well. Like he, he knows that he's gonna be an NBA star at one yeah. point. So he doesn't so really care about like artist, the, yeah. the math or anything. NBA stars don't need that. That's kind of how I was, you know, it's like I, I knew I was gonna be an artist. There was zero doubt. So I didn't want to go to school. You know, I didn't want to, do any of that and so i just cranked out just barely a high school diploma and then i started doing artwork right after that which which is inspiring because that it always goes to passion that passion pushed you through because you knew and i think we just covered it that you knew internally you didn't have the big ego but you planted that seed i mean you talked about it in second grade you're doing kids artwork on the refrigerator <laughs> <laughs> so so from back then it grew and you planted it and you nurtured it 
but you didn't flaunt it. And I, it, it, mm. I think that's one of the most important things as we start wrapping up is that you, you nurtured it internally mm. yourself mm -hmm. and you just knew it was going to carry you through. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly it. It's, uh, I just, uh, just went for it more or less. That's kind of, yeah. but, but that got you through those hurdles and over, you mm -hmm. know, the humps of, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to learn something new? Yeah. But you were open to op opportunities. Like when that company said, Oh, come work for us, but then we'll send you to Seagraph and, mm -hmm. and tell us which software we need to get. Mm -hmm. You never pass on an opportunity. Yeah. I think that's one of the most important things that artists need to know yeah. when a door opens, that's what you need. You need to yeah. walk through in no whatever, that, wherever that takes you, mm -hmm. you need to embrace it. Yeah. You can always walk out of that door. Yeah. If you have to, you can always yeah. walk out. It's yeah. always a learning. It's not experience. fun though. It's like ha fun, having yeah. to say, I can't do this and go, Yeah, you know, I think it's happened like once to me where it was like just something that was out of my, you know, range of what I could do. And I just had yeah. to like throw in, throw in the hat, but but you it learn from that. You, you don't. Know. Yeah, exactly. It's all part of it. Because next time somebody calls and asks and say they have a big gig for me doing that, I say no, thank you. But I, <laughs> I know other people that can do it. You know. Yeah. yeah hand it off to them. Well, well hey, I, uh, just wanted to say thanks for coming in and, thank and thanks for being on the show, man. Uh, it's been Appreciate great having it. you here, and thank we'll you. definitely have you back on, man. Cool. It was a pleasure to meet you, Meets. Thank you. Um, thank you. We will have you back because, cool. like I said, uh, okay, we'll be honest. I know what he's working on and we will talk about it later, but we respect, we talked about the tattoo of the NDA. Yeah. You can't talk about anything and we respect well, and that. And we're going to respect that. Yeah. It, it, never, it, never once again, that's one of the most important things as we wrap up yeah. is all artists, whatever company you work for, mm. you got to zip your mouth shut. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. that is probably one of the most important things. And we respect that. Yeah. that you respect that and you can't talk about God, it. Yeah. So yes. we will have you back. Cool. And thank you for coming back. Thank you guys. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right.